Linda, what are some of the current ways live resin carts are being manufactured in a commercial setting? Yeah, so I'd say there's a, you know three main ways that people are doing this process. The first way that people are doing this process is they will you know, perform the cold extraction, they'll take their crude and they'll do a pressurized decarboxylation. And what that means is they put their, their live resin crude into a reaction vessel that can be heated and pressurized and they heat it up to perform the decarboxylation reaction, but they keep it pressurized to keep those, that terpene fraction intact. So, so usually they're adding like a, what do they call it, like a nit nitrogen blanket? Yep. Um, and maybe using even like a vessel, like a, a diamond miner or something that's commonly found in, in these labs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you'll often add an inert gas or just use the CO2 as it builds up from the decarboxylation, but essentially you're just trying to prevent uh, you know, those terpenes from off gassing away through that process. Um, the second way that people are doing it is sometimes you can actually prevent the crystallization in the carts by just adding distillate or THC back into your cart. So you'll take a live resin run hmm. um, that would otherwise have crystallized and you can add enough THC to prevent that crystallization. So they take distillate and just form, reformulate with distillate. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's kind of a partial decarboxylated cart, right? So you've got some some combination of THCA, THC, and then terpenes. Yeah, exactly. And so there's a repeatability and a reliability, you know, concern there that you're not going to have, you know, with different um, uh, live resin varieties and from different strains and whatnot, you might have unpredictable. So batch to batch, you've got to re, re come up with your formula every yeah. single time, and also test it, and then also you know yeah face the face the issue where you might have a recall because you have a whole bunch of uh, crystallized carts. So I mean, crystallized carts is one potential concern, but also if you reformulate it and it's a little bit more runny than a previous uh, batch, potentially you could have leak issues. All sorts of kind of concerns could be coming up there. Yeah, exactly. You just lose a lot of control of that process. What's the third way that people are doing this process? Yeah, so the third way that we kind of think is, is one of the best ways is actually to perform an initial crystallization to separate the THCA from your high terpene extract fraction mm -hmm. of your live resin, and then decarboxylate your, your THCA separately, and then recombine the two. And uh, we think that that's you know, more desirable for a number of reasons. We'll talk about that 